And hello, my name is Brad. Uh, I'm also known as War Weasel on Lisp, Lisp Games on IRC. Uh, I'm wanted, I wanted to talk about Clinch uh, a little bit. I've been working on it for quite a while, but unfortunately, I don't get around to making videos about it with what it can do and its capabilities. So I thought I would make a video, kind of explain what it does and how it does it, uh, and hopefully get, make other people as excited as I am about this project. Uh, right now, this is a little demo program I wrote, um, the obligatory Conway's Game of Life. Um, this is being rendered, drawn, uh, real time. Not just the quad here, but also all of these are be all these dots are being drawn by Cairo, uh, which is a very fast vector graphics program. Uh, Clinch has strong support for this. And it also has strong support for rich text through the Pango library. Uh, but uh, I thought I would go through a couple of demos here. Uh, this one runs fairly quickly. And one of the nice things about Clinch is that since it runs on Lisp, I can go in and modify just about anything I want to in whenever I want to. Let's see, where are we here? I'm going to open up the source for this. And I think it's going a little bit too fast. So let's go over here. And as soon as I find the time. There we go, on idle. Now, right now, it's changing pretty quickly. So, let's make this two times a second, or every two seconds, I think. There we go. Updating every 100 milliseconds. The great thing about this is that this isn't just something that I changed or some variable somewhere. This is actually a function that's being called. And I recompiled the function and changed it uh, while it was running, which is a very powerful uh, ability. I don't want to say paradigm. I hate the word paradigm. It's another word for idea. Um, but. It is a very powerful idea. Over here. Let's shut this down. And let's run another application here. This is my little little scratch pad. <clears throat> and I'll be able to fill it with some stuff very quickly. Um, well, first thing is, uh, I have a node object, which is basically a, a matrix with some children, and it can render anything underneath it um, to make this fairly easy. I can do a, a load. Quad. All right. Make quad for texture. Wrong one. Back three. Create quad for image. There we go. And that's not right either. Uh, let's take a look. Look in here. Oh, it is create quad for image. And now I can just go to any old place. What do I have? Uh, some backgrounds here. 
Um, yeah, let's try that. And you make things a little bit easier. This gives back an entity, which is much like a mesh. It wraps the whole idea of a mesh. But, and then I can put that into a node and it will render it. But usually we just want to put it right into a node right away. So I'm going to do that, make that nice. And I was a little bit too close, but here we go. I just created this mesh with a single line, uh, loading it in. Uh, if I want, I can resize it or you know, play with it all I want. Uh, if I like, and this is good, I can do a. Let's see, the entity was the first thing here, so. Um, here, use the power of Emacs. And I can do a full G on that texture. And get the data directly from there. Uh, but to keep from spilling all over the screen, I'm just going to take the first thousand. So there you are, you can see this. Uh, if you look closely, you can see it's a 0, 0, 0, 255. That's because I'm keeping the data in a, uh, in a char or 8-bit uh, uh, in integer in which alpha is, at minimum, uh, it's opaque. So if I want to do, let's see, what, if, what can I do that's interesting? Well, I can uh, go through the data. Or I from zero length data do set up a ref data I and let's make that just a say one twenty eight. And you'll notice that did nothing, right? Um, that's because this is an array that I pulled from the GPU from a buffer, and now it's on the CPU side, and I have to push it back I have to prove uh, that I actually do have this data. I'm going to data to zero to a thousand. There we are. Now I can do a push G to the texture, and this is my data. Oh, and I probably needed to make that a little bit. And that's why I always put the subsequence there. Uh, otherwise, it's going to try to print out that entire array, which is a pain. So let's go through here. Let's just make this zero. Um, actually, that won't work. Let's just make this uh, 255 for everything. And then I'm going to push it up to this. And there. There we go. The reason why I couldn't make it all zeros is because the alpha would be zero and we could see straight through it. It would be perfectly translucent as if it weren't there at all. Uh, and so. Uh, there are several ways of interacting with the GPU buffers. Uh, you can do a map and keep it on the GPU uh, and then modify it and send it back. Uh, there are certain restrictions on that. Another thing is Clinch is multi-threaded. This over here is running in a completely different thread. The thread that the REPL's running on, completely different. Therefore, if I do something, rewind. 
most of Clinch knows what's going on. If you try to run something that has to run in the main thread, it will tell the main thread to do it and then get back to you later. Um, usually pretty quickly, but it will it will wait and it will run that bit on the other, you know, in the other thread so OpenGL can understand it. Uh, but if I don't use a clinch object, let's say I'm using uh, you know, native OpenGL, let's set the clear color to zero, right? Nothing's going to happen. And in fact, we're actually kind of lucky that that's all that happened. Uh, it could crash, probably not the whole program, but it would definitely, some things can give you an error uh, right here. But there's a, you know, let's see, SDL2 with or in main thread. But I end up using that quite a bit. So I just make it a bang or exclamation point. And so now, I'm going to do a bang when I can type. There. Or the third color can be one. There. Whatever you like. Again, if I took that out, nothing. Okay, well, what can we do with this? Well, Clinch has a few other things up its sleeve. So let me take a look at this. I can't remember. All right. Uh, this is something I got from one of my friends in the Lisp Games IRC chat. Uh, Axion, I think. And if I got that wrong, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. I I'll post the person who made this. Uh, it's a really cool mesh. So let's set up Raptor. And we're just going to do a clinch. Let's see. Import mesh. And that's in my downloads. It's a simple OBJ file. And I want it to be. Nope. I forgot to give this one the option for a for a parent. But that's fine. I'll load this up. Then we'll add child to our node, and it's the raptor. And yeah, apparently I took that out too far. So there we go. Here we have a nice little raptor. Now this kind of bothers me a little if you notice where the sun is. Looks like it's coming from below. And if you're not a movie monster, that really doesn't look good. So here, let's take a look at... But one of the very nice things about using Emacs and Slime, so I can do a Slime Inspect. And we're going to look at the Raptor. Well, the Raptor is started off with a bunch of nodes. The nodes have children. But underneath these nodes, if I go down far enough, I should find the entity, which is the actual mesh. Go there. I can do some interesting things here. I can you know, uh, reset that to set enabled to nil. And that will make it disappear so it's true. It comes back again. Uh, but what I'm interested in is I want this to be back on the on here, so set F R mesh. There we go. Now I can go in and well, actually let's bump, bump up here. The anatomy of an entity is pretty much just a OpenGL draw call encapsulated. Uh, I have attributes, I have an index buffer, I have a mode, uh, which is almost always triangles, I have a shader program, and I have the uniforms uh, that we send to all these. So if you notice here, these are the names of the various 
variables, various variables, that the shader program will take. In fact, here, let's take a look at the shader program. I can do a full G on that and get lots of information about this, uh, such as you know, the vertex shader, the fragment shader, and the source code here, and the uniforms and attributes that it takes. So that's always nice. Now I can get to these various items. In this case, I want to look at uniforms by using uniforms and an R mesh. There we go. And that's all of them. If I want to set one, I do a set, set F uniform. And let's make the light direction. In this case, it's that. So let's make. See if we can make that go here. So now, if we take a look, oh, our light's now in the right place. That's well, better place. I don't still don't like that. Uh, can you make it here? There we go. That's a little bit nicer. So now we're getting, I think, a little bit better. There we go. Anyway, that's a good example. We can also do this with attributes. Attributes, uh, R mesh. And you can see the attributes. If you notice that uh, we have a buffer in there, so I can just get that. This is the vertex buffer. If I wanted to, I can just uh, pull G that. And you can see all the vertex information. Obviously, it's a little difficult to, uh, to edit by hand, but you can push and pull this just like we did the texture. So, the same things apply. All right, well, this is kind of boring. I, I, I can understand. Uh, if you're looking at this and saying, okay, well, this is a really boring uh, object, we really want to, you know, to, to wrap this in something, to give it a, give it a nice, diffuse uh, texture. Uh, I can do other textures, I just don't have it set up right now. So let's do our text, and let's say load texture from file, and download the Raptor, I think it's diffuse. Yep. Oop. Oh, wrong one. Uh, create texture from file. There we go. There we are. And then I can again set up uniform R mesh T1 because up to then it's a one by one identity texture. I didn't come up with the term for that. And there we go. So now we have at least the diffuse. Uh, we can do the same thing with some specular. Why not? Specular. Okay, we can so that uh, there's the specular. Okay, looks pretty good. I, I think I might have go with that if I had to choose one. But it does look like it's uh, transparent. Let's take a look here.
Yes, it is transparent. That's pretty cool. And I think there's one more. There's after spec gloss and bump. Why not? Since I'm doing all this and you're watching it. So bump. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's what a bump map normally looks like to me. Or at least that I've seen. So that's really neat. And if I want to, I can just set that right back. And hooray. Again, this is easy peasy, not much problem at all, I don't think. Notice that you're not dealing with shaders at all at this point. Um, you don't have to. It, however, you can make your own. And you do it in the same style that I do. There are no you know, hidden tricks. There are no mirrors. No smoke. So let's do unload all. Okay. Well, we've seen some textures. We've seen what that can do. Uh, we can also do animations. So let's. Uh, if I remember what the name of this is, make animation in quad. Clever name. So here, I'm going to go to pictures, test patterns. What do I got? Um, okay. Parent is again going to be node. No, oh, because it failed to load. There, that's the right one. The downside is I use free image and it's been great for everything. Unfortunately, it is not great. Well, it's not fast when it loads animations. Here we go. And I kind of like that one. So, let's see what else we got. Mm. I'm going to say five. Thank you, Tramp. Oh yeah, this is really good. Again, I can move that around and such. Uh, although, I should probably reset that. Uh, here, I'll show you what happened here. I Do this. See? Mess that up. So. See, I can set. Oh, I forgot. Uh, set up rotation. Node. Two. Another nice thing I have is this V. V bang, which is for making vectors. This is a quad, quadarian, quadarian. I don't know. If anyone can tell me how to say that, please let me know. And see, there we go. Uh, probably should talk a little bit about nodes. They're fairly simple, but they're somewhat important. Uh, uh, I do what a lot of game engines do and I have a separate you know, translation rotation scale I use quaterians quaterians anyway cues 
and you know, your vector for translation and scaling, which I don't use that much. And then, of course, it makes all of these. It has a few nice features. Uh, you can give it a transform, and it will pull out the you know these the transformation, rotation, and scaling information. Uh, it can have children. It can be enabled or disabled. Uh, current transform, I don't think is being used right now. I think that's an artifact. Uh, let's do another unload, and then let's see what else we have. Five. I think seven is really cool. Whoops. And once again. Now, remember, this is all being done in a separate thread. So again, I think that's kind of neat. Yeah, redo on load here in a bit, but eight. I just start doing this now. Just kind of prove that this is all being done in a separate thread. There we go. Ah, this is the one I was looking for. I think it looks really neat. This is the last one, and then we'll get to something else. I think is really cool. And if you ever wanted to squish the earth, you can. You know what? This has gone on longer than I expected. And so I'm going to go ahead and call it quits for now. Next time I want to show how I can do how I can draw on textures and maybe a, even create a shader or two and show that we can do that uh, in real time like we can do everything else. All right. Well, uh until then, goodbye, and if you like what you saw here today, please drop me a line, uh, let me know, and uh, if you want to use it, please let me know what you're using it for so that I know where to look for bugs and to how to help you. Okay. I'm always on the Lisp Games channel at IRC, so drop by anytime. It's a small community and it's you know very friendly. Uh, have a nice night.